fairly invest some money. The rate of interest for the first year is 2.5%. When you are reading at this point, you might not feel that you are quite confident. Why? Because you don't have an amount for this money. The question only says some money. So if you want to make your life easy, you can start making an assumption. You can say maybe fairly invest $100. Why did I pick 100? Because 100 is easy when you are calculating percentage. See, initially when you started, you had 100. But then the interest rate is 2.5% for the first year. So what is the amount you will be having now? It's 102.5. If you choose 100 as your initial value, then it's easy. Let's say if you're choosing 990, of course, it's going to get more difficult. But your final answer will exactly be the same. Okay, for those who are unsure how I got this answer, what I'm doing is I take the 100 times by 2.5%. And then I add this with my original amount, which is the 100. And this should give me the value. If you are not, uh, if you find this a little lengthy, you can use the multiplier. 100 times 102.5%. It means you are taking this as 100% and you add the 2.5%. It will give you the 102.5% directly. Okay, now we go back to our question. Now what is happening in year 2? They are saying at the end of the second year, the overall percentage increment is 6.6. .6. What is the meaning of this overall percentage increment? It means you need to look from the start to what you are having now, the current. So I am having an increment of 6.6%. .6%. Can you find what is this value now? Isn't it easy? I know you can easily write it as 106.6. .6. You know the overall growth from the start of your investment of 100. Now, Question 1 is to calculate rate of interest for the second year. So it means you need to look from year 1 to year 2 only. So how do you do that? You just use the percentage formula where you take your current value, you minus your original amount divided by your original times by 100. In here, what is meant by original? Original means the year 1 value because you are studying for second year, the rate of interest for the second year. So I will do 106.6 .6 minus 102.5 divided by 102.5 times 100, which will give me 4% increment, which is your second answer, I mean, which is your answer. Now, if you are using shortcut, maybe at school, they might have taught you this idea. If it is 6%, uh, then you can easily write this as 1.066. This is your multiplier from your original. You, they will always do the multiplier as a shortcut. What is the multiplier over here? It is 1.025. So generally what you will do when you are finding for the second year, you will do 1.066 divided by 1.025. What will this give me? It will give me 1.04. So quickly you know the answer is going to be 4%. But using this shortcut can sometimes confuse students. So you rather take an initial value, an easy initial value to solve. Okay, let's see another example now. Okay, what does this example say? Or one year the sales increased by 15%. But they didn't give you what is the original amount. They only say the sales increased by 15%. The following year, the sales increased by 18%. So now we need to find the overall percentage increase in the sales. A, a student who understands the shortcut, they will just use the multiplier and solve it. Okay. What they will do? The multiplier in the first scenario is going to be 1.15. And in the second scenario, it's going to be 1.18. Why do I get this 1 over here? Because your original amount is worth 100%. So 100% in decimal is 1. Now you are having extra 15%. So what is 15% in decimal? 0 0.15. That's why when you add up, you are getting 1.15. So to quickly do this, many students will do 1.15 times 1.18, which will give us 1.35%. And then they will remove they will remove the one, the original amount, which is the 100%. And it will give us 0 0.357. When you convert into a percentage, because we want the overall percentage, you can write it as 35.7, which is your final answer. 
Now, this work, this method works for those who understand the multiplier concept. But how do I do this without uh, trying to understand this multiplier concept? You just take a value and start doing. Let's say you begin. You start with an amount which is 100. So the sales is increasing by 15% now. So what will happen if the sales increase by 15% then you will get 115. Correct? Okay, maybe I should not put year 0 and year 1. It's just one year. Okay. The following year the sales increase by 18%. So what will you do? You will take 115 and then you will times by 18%. You will add up the 115. Okay. How do I get the next value? Like in here, from 100, how did I get the 115? It's also same like the multiplier. Because you are using 100, it becomes easy for you now. For those who don't understand, you do slowly. 100 times by 15%, it will give you... 15. So your original value was 100. Then you add with the 15, you will end up with 115. Now, how do I do for the next one? The next one, I'm going to do 115 times by 18%. I will take this amount, then I will add with my 115. If you don't know the multiplier concept, then you can do it like this. You will get 20.7, then you plus with 115, that will give me 135.7 so this is what's happening now when you want to calculate the overall percentage then you use the same method again your current value is 135.7 and your old value or the original value was 100 divide by 100 and you will realize that ah my answer is exactly the same so, to summarize, if you are confused on how to begin this question, you can always start with an easy value, then you do the mathematical operation. Otherwise, you can always use your multiplier concept.